Welcome to my coast to coast walk. As you can see, I've turned up at St Bees and collected my obligatory stone from the, uh, the west coast, which I'm going to chuck in the sea, hopefully when I reach the east coast, 198 miles. Why the coast to coast? Well, I've done a couple of short walks and I just kind of thought that life's too short um, to hang about. So why not give it a go? bit nervous as I've never done anything of this magnitude on my own but you've got to give it a go haven't you? I thought about documenting this as a turn by turn affair but there are other more successful YouTube videos about how to do this coast to coast than I could ever produce so for me I'm just going to document it as I see it. Behind me St Peter's Lighthouse which means I'm really just at the start so uh, let's see what the 198 miles has in store. sure whether or not you can see that in a distance but that is where I'm heading Day one over and done with. I'm currently in the grounds of the Fox and Hounds public house in Ennerdale. Um, it's five pounds to pitch up here, so it's great value. The feet, after 15 and a half miles, a little bit sore. I'm gonna sort them out now. And the shoulders are a little bit sore as well because I'm carrying too much weight. But I knew this way uh, when I first started. Hopefully that all will get better as the time goes on. Day two tomorrow, from here, over to Rosswaite or Borrowdale. So, uh, let's get some food on and then to bed. This morning, it seems like the weather is uh, clearing up. Better not have jinxed it now. Leaving Ennerdale Bridge and on the way to Borrowdale. 
going to be a pretty level walk up until Loftbeck. That's going to be a bit of a struggle, but I'm sure the views will be worth it. Blacksail YHA. Now if I remember from the book it's the most remote YHA in England if not the UK. Normally it's open and you can pop in, do yourself a brew um, and use the, uh, the facilities. A bit of an oddity box inside so that's a great, uh, a great relief after you've done nine miles but due to Covid it's closed. You may well have heard um, a horn earlier on. Apparently there are four blokes running around these hills wearing red sashes. And there's a number of people who are currently um, trotting around all over the place looking for them. So there's a bit of a, a game going on, a bit of a manhunt. Seems really, really interesting. In fact, I can see a hare now. Two seconds. That's him running towards me. Seems a really interesting uh, game they're playing. But for me, I'm just going to uh, have a bit of lunch and then uh, gonna find myself up Loughbeck. I'm not sure I'm looking forward to that one. Day three, it's a great morning. Just left my campsite, which wasn't really a campsite, I was wild camping. But then leads on to a uh, story, last night, just before midnight, uh, a very unhappy landowner came across uh, my tent and some others, asked us to move. While camping 101, you just got to do what they say. But it's just a reminder that one, always carry a torch, of which I had, and always be able to put your tent up in the dark when you find somewhere else. Wasn't particularly funny at the time, but uh, I've got a sense of humour about it now. One foot now, on the way to Patterdale. I hope to get there today. Uh, it's another 15 or so miles, probably a little bit more. It's a great morning. Keep it up one more minute. Keep it up, 
You're so great, standing, talking. You got me checkmate. No one's watching or nothing. I have cleared out the room, also that you can get to be the big spoon. At this juncture, there are three routes I can take, apparently. Two are high. And one is low. Knees aside, I think my mind's made up. I was intending to uh, get to Pasadena today. But the, uh, the time has taken the better of me. But anyway, it's a couple of miles away from this location. And then I thought, why struggle all the way to Pasadale when I can stay here? Day four, got up really early this morning. My intention was to strip down the camp and get gone. However, I've been here a couple of hours now and you can see why. My intention is to, uh, to get to Shap today or somewhere close to Shap. I've got a few extra miles to do because I stopped short of Patterdale. So a uh, bit of a long day ahead. It's also the, uh, the last day in the Lake District. And it's been a bit of a slog, in all honesty. But I think I'm gonna miss it. So, onwards and upwards. I'm about to walk to Kirby Stevens, which is 20 miles. Now, yesterday was a bit of an epic, 24 miles. My hips and um, knees are aching, I can't lie. So today, um, a good friend of mine is going to take my uh, backpack over to Kirby Stevens, um, and I'll pick it up from there. So uh, it should be 20 miles of planar sailing. You got issues that makes two of us, but someone's gotta change. If we never ever met before, if I never opened up my door, yeah, 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 yeah. I 
tried to find it from the, uh, the maps, but this area is where Robin Hood was buried, apparently. Yeah, yeah. You're about to lose me. 14 miles in, still at it, walking across the moors. Uh, something which I think might be a bit of handy advice. The route I took, took me through Orton, as you saw, and I stopped and had a spot of lunch at the cafe. My suggestion would be, by all means, get to Orton, have something to eat and stock up on your water. Because uh, I've been walking around here for quite some time now, and there aren't that many places that you can, uh, you can refill, if any at all, especially in this weather. Also, it is the moors, the moorland. I think I've struck lucky as it's quite dry today. But in the wet, this place would be atrocious. So be on your guard. Water and sunshine is what you need. Day six, leaving Kirby Stevens, and I'm on the way to Keld. It's a glorious day. Um, today is supposed to be the hardest day navigation-wise, because I'm about to go up to the Nine Standards Rig, and then over that uh, that moorland over there. Apparently, it's pretty boggy, with um, no waypoints or very few waypoints and people up and get lost there, so um, wish me luck. Made it to the nine standard rig. Now uh, this is this is important for me and all coast to coasters because although mileage wise it probably doesn't add up mentally this is the halfway point and everything else is technically downhill. Raven Seat Farm, home of the world famous cream teas apparently. Anyway, that's what it says in the, uh, in the guidebook. But it's COVID and it's closed. Onwards and upwards. Sitting, thinking in my 
You don't see this every day. Um, disused parts of a tractor. Um, it actually marks the two routes you can take to get to Reith. The high route to the left and to the right the lower route down to Swaledale. Now I've been told the lower route, although it's not the official route, is the way to go and it's a lot more scenic. I think I've had my, uh, my fill of heights for a little while. I'm taking a low route, but first. Buy what I want, I don't want it. Do what I like, I don't like it. My life is a mess. Screaming with boredom. I don't feel nothing when I'm buzzing. Someone had some glamorous hope. Cause when I sleep alone for insomnia, they say you have to be beaten up before you're tender enough. Made it to Reith in good time, really. Um, over some very lower, flatter ground. So my feet are quite thankful for it. I'm not camping in Reith at the moment. I'm just outside, about a mile and a half outside of Reith in Grinton Lodge. And this is the uh, the YHA Grinton Lodge. Just me and the sheep. So got a bit more trotting to do tomorrow to get back onto the route. Bit sandwich time. Easy stroll. Um, put a few rises to catch me out. Currently at the post office, waiting for it to open half two um, to collect some stuff from my feet that I ordered off Amazon yesterday. It's a great little service. Um, I'd lost my hat two days ago at the last campsite. I was lamenting its loss, and um, this morning after Duncan uh, Farm. I bumped into a chap that I was uh, sharing the campsite with and um, he returned my cap to me. Picked it up on the way. I think that's a great thing about the coast to coast. Um, shared experiences and whatnot. Just brings out the best in people. So I'm a happy man today. So Amazon delivery, ice cream into town and then I'm going to walk off towards Colburn because that's where I'm going to be camping tonight.
day nine. Richmond to Danby Whisk. Here I am in Danby Whisk. This is a great little place. Now, Wainwright wasn't too keen on the route here because it was fairly flat um, with nothing for him to see, but I, and more importantly, my feet absolutely loved it. It's a really enchanting village, this. Um, it's got it all going on and you get the feeling that um, me sitting on the grass here now is sullying the place. But it's got a lovely church down the road, um, which is next to the, uh, the newly founded campsite. And there's also an, an, an honesty tuck shop and it's well stocked, let me tell you. But I'm not camping tonight. I'm staying at the, uh, the White Swanner Drop Lucky. Um, I made good time here. 11 miles in four hours so this is as much as a, of a day off that my feet are going to get so tonight is going to be a pub meal and a bed and then tomorrow over to Ingleby Cross this coast to coast is superb i 
day 11. Ingleby Cross to Blakely Ridge. It's a, uh, a 20 miler today, so I understand. And we start the day off uh, by going up that. But first, I'm having my breakfast. So back there was the, uh, the junction of the Cleveland Way and the coast to coast. We, uh, we leave the Cleveland Way now and we won't see that again until um, very near to Robin Hood's Bay. So from here on in, it's back to the coast to coast. Blakey Ridge is uh, another couple of hours away I think, possibly about four to six miles. Let's get cracking. Day 12, Blakely Ridge to Gromont is the actual route, but I'm going to go to Glazedale, so it's going to be a short one for me today. You will notice yesterday that I didn't have my pack with me, uh, but I've got it back now. Um, due to that 20 miler across the moors, I utilised the baggage service drop, which I was told about on the very first day I started this. Um, very efficient, uh, but it gave me the uh, the break that my shoulders, feet, knees needed for these uh, these final legs. So I've got the pack back. I'm going to have some breakfast, and then uh, I'm going to hit the road. Blakey Ridge then, and the Lion Inn. A welcome relief after yesterday's 20 miler. A uh, a maze of a place with little nooks and crannies, doesn't quite make sense as a building layout in the summer. But in the winter, when the, uh, when the log fire's on, it comes into its own, I would think. Now, you'd think it was in the middle of nowhere, and, and guess what, it is. But the footfall there is tremendous. Uh, from the pictures on the walls, lots of famous people have, uh, have been here. And apparently, most years, there's a music festival on, and as I said, quite a few famous people have played here. Top Gear have been here recently. And in relation to the, uh, the actual area, um, Egdon Bridge, which is where I shall be uh, strolling through the next 48 hours or so, apparently, Harrison Ford is there at the moment, filming um, another Indiana Jones. So there's quite a draw to this uh, this remote part of the moors. I'm only going as far as Glazedale, as I've already said. So it's a short walk today. I'm giving myself a little bit more to do on the last leg. So, um, 
I'll figure out where I'm going. Crack on with the rest of the day. It says in the book that from this point here onwards, you can possibly, on a good day, get to see your end destination, your goal, the North Sea. Well, I believe I can see it, but I'm not sure that the camera will pick it up, but here we go. It's right over on the horizon. And even if that's not the, uh, the North Sea, it's a good indicator that I'm almost done. I've got a huge smile on my face now. Well, this is it, day 13 and possibly the last day of my coast to coast walk. 20 miles to go, Glalesdale to Robin Hood's Bay. It's a glorious morning, good day for a walk. So to all intents and purposes, I've made it. I've uh, travelled from the west coast of England, across the top of it, to the east coast on foot, and I've walked every step, 198 miles, depending on whichever book you want to uh, you want to read, in 13 days, and I'm absolutely chuffed to bits. 
the only thing I've got left to do now is get down to the shoreline and Wainwright's Bar and deposit that pebble that I took from the west coast into the east coast sea. I've had some really good times on this trip. Met some really interesting people and some massive highlights. And in reality, I've had no low points, although it has been a bit of a slog. I'm not gonna lie. I might do a, um, a novice walker's guide to this trip in the near future. But what have I got from this epic journey? Well, if you put your mind to it, you can do whatever you want. You've just got to have the inclination. This trip here, this is for my, uh, my dear friend, Stephen Roberts, AKA Rita. Uh, this walk is in memory of you. Rest in peace, my friend. But for everybody else, my advice, don't wait for that opportunity or that rainy day, that Willy Wonka golden ticket invite. Have the idea Get yourself out there and just get it done. <laughs> no, I've got to get it done. <laughs>